Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. Um, this is your second project, which I'm calling Cookies and Simulations. And in this one, we're going to pretend that we're baking 100 cookies and that we have exactly 100 chocolate chips. And after you stir in the chips and bake the cookies all of the same size, you select a cookie at random. And the question is, how many chips would you expect to find in your cookie? And you're going to fill in the chart below by using the random number generator <clears throat> provided at this website. You can also use your calculator. Every calculator has a function where you can randomly generate numbers. The problem is um, if you use your calculator you can generate one number at a time and then you have to do it a hundred times. And if you go to this website you can generate them all at once. You can also very easily generate numbers in Excel. There's a function equal R-A-N-D-B, and that means that you want to say random numbers between. The B means you want to find numbers between, and you can use that. I was going to put a video up about how to do that, but I decided that um, if you want that to do that, you can go look that up, um, because I'm really kind of wanting you to use this random.org website. So you want to um, have a program that generates numbers ranging from 0, 0 to 99. Because the chart that you're going to be filling, filling in, this box right here, this is representing the, box, the number 0, 0. And this box down here in the corner represents the number 99. So we would want to fill that in. I filled some of these tally marks in so I could explain things to you, but I just did it randomly, um, my random. And really, as a person, I can't randomly do that very well. But I just wanted to show you some tally marks. So um, let's go to that website and see what it looks like to randomly generate some integers. Integers are numbers that are not decimal, right? They're just, um, we're actually going to do um, whole numbers. Okay, so I'm going to click on this site. Control click is going to take me to this uh, random.org website. And once I get there, I get, have some choices, and I'm going to say how many numbers that I want it to generate. And I want it to generate 100 numbers. And each of those numbers represents a chocolate chip. So I have 100 chocolate chips. I'm going to generate 100 numbers. And then I want integers to have the value between 0 and 99. That's inclusive, so that gives me 100 different values. And I'm going to have them formatted in five columns. You could do as many columns as you want. You could do 20 columns of 5. That would be fine. doesn't really matter because that's not something that I have to see. And then I'm going to go down here and click Get Numbers. And it gave me 20 columns of 5 numbers. So I'm going to go back and go, I don't really like that. What about 10 columns? I kind of like that format better. And it gave me 100 numbers. Now I'm going to take those numbers and copy those and see if I can't put them into this document to make it easier on myself right above the box. I'm going to do this, paste that in. Now I've got those numbers right here and I could start to mark numbers in my box. So these are not in order but doesn't matter. So 69 that would be I'm going to go over to 6 horizontally and down to 9 vertically and that's where I would make my tick mark. I'm just using a forward slash for that. The next one, and then I would mark that off because it gets really confusing if you don't because you're like, you lose your place. So as you go, mark those off. And then go to 72, you're going to go over to 70, down to 2, and put a tick mark. And you're going to do that until you've done that for all 100 chips. Now the numbers that you generated represent the chips, and the boxes down here represent the cookies. So I have not put a hundred tick marks in here. Yours will have more tick marks. Um, I started off doing asterisks, but I'm doing tick marks. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is after I finish with the hundred chips, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to count up the number of chips, a uh, number of cookies that have zero chips. So in this case, a cookie was represented by a box. So if I wanted to know how many of them had zero chips, I would count all the boxes that have no tick marks in them. Those are cookies that did not get a chip. And then they would say, okay, how many had one? And I would go through and I would count all the boxes that had one tick mark 
that represents cookies that got one chip. And then I could do the same for twos, threes, and anything greater than four all goes in one category. So we have the number of cookies that here should add up to 100 because you have 100 cookies. So after you figure out what goes in all these boxes, then you have to uh, make sure that you counted 100. And if you got more than 100, it's going to throw your group results off. So you are each doing this part individually, so you really want to make sure and go back and make sure that you have exactly 100 chips and exactly 100 cookies for this to work. There's a few questions that um, you might answer later, but I do want to say maybe you're a culinary arts student who likes to bake, or maybe you just like to bake, and maybe you have people at your house who would enjoy doing this. If you want to do the actual experiment and not the simulation, that would be fantastic. What you have to do is bake 100 cookies using exactly 100 chips. So you have to count out the chocolate chips ahead of time. And all the 100 cookies that you make have to be the same size. Makes sense, right? You don't want one cookie that's four times as big as another. It's going to be way more likely to get a chip in it, right? And then um, after they bake, you break them open and you see how many cookies actually had um, no chips or one chip or two chips. And if you do that, it would be fun to send a picture or include that along with your group work if you decided to do the actual experiment and usually I require that one or two people in the group do the experiment but there is a cost involved in making cookies so I don't feel comfortable making somebody do that and also I hate to bake and it would be not fun for me to do that but if it's something you would like to do um, feel free to do that you have to be really careful when you start to break the cookies open have your collection data ready to write down every time somebody opens a cookie and says, oh, no chips, you make a tick mark under the zeros so that you get an accurate count from that. All right, that's how to carry out the experiment, and in the next video I'll tell you what your group has to do with that information. Have a fantastic day.